ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲಘು ವಾಕ್ಯ ವೃತ್ತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೀಕ್ ಲಘು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಗುರು ಬಿಗ್ ಲಘು ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಗುರು ಯುನೋ ಗುರು ಡಸಂಟ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಮೀನ್ ಗುರು ಓಕೆ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ yeah even though we can say some gurus are big uh, but still <laughs> here it is neuter guru guru means big opposite laghu small short and that is because this text is is a concise version of uh, another text also attributed to adi shankara and uh, that the name of that is simply vakya vritti so you see why this is called laghu vakya vritti ha huh? yeah vakya vritti and ಲಘು ವಾಕ್ಯ ವೃತ್ತಿ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಕ್ಯ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಕಂಪ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ವೀಕ್ ಸೊ ಲಘು ವಾಕ್ಯ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಏಟೀನ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಕಲ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ both of them are attributed to adi shankara bhagavan adi shankara and uh, the the vakya vritti unfolds certain things about vedanta shastra really speaking anything we say is a uh, outright and shameless plagiarism yeah of what of the upanishads bhagavad gita itself is the is a kind of a plagiarism of all the upanishads unabashed and then everything else that comes after it all the prakarana granthas prakarana granthas means those manuscripts those uh, works of vedanta that systematically unfold all the things that the upanishad says in in a certain krama order orderly unfoldment like uh, what is an orderly unfoldment first there will be a discussion on uh, the subject matter vishaya what is this subject matter and the vishaya of course is always you know bhagavan as the truth of oneself vishaya then adhikari adhikarin who is this for and sometimes that is put right in the beginning of the first verse or even the invocatory verse ಮುಕ್ಷೂಣಾಂ ಹಿತಾರ್ಥಾಯ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ ಅಭಿಧೀಯತೆ ದ ಆಥರ್ ಸೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ 
you know, immediately we know this is for the hita, the comfort, the benefit of, of who? Mumukshus. So, only Mumukshus allowed to understand it and read it. So, as soon as a non Mumukshu picks it up, first of all, you know, we can rest uh, comfortably because the non Mumukshu will not pick it up. <laughs> But in case they do, they can, they can let go of it. So, vishaya adhikari. So, all this is, 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 is given in the beginning. It's a systematic unfoldment of the message of the Upanishad. And, and what will I... This is the most important question. What will I get out of this reading this, studying this thing, this manuscript. What will I get? It's a, it's a, it's an important question. Why should I study this? This is called Prayojana. Then finally we have Prayojana, okay. And what is the Prayojana? I will be free of anger and sorrow. It's a very good prayojana, very big prayojana. I will, you know, understand the vision of oneness. This is a wonderful prayojana, fantastic prayojana. So, the, the purport is clear. But I will be free of samsara. In this life, next life, every, you know, life after life after life, I'll be free. That is the prayojana. But then the prayojana, the has to have some kind of a connection. What is the connection between the book and the prayojana? <laughs> if you say, I want to be free of samsara, you know, we can go see a movie free of samsara because you are entering into somebody else's samsara <laughs> of, the, of the hero and the heroine you are lost in their samsara and you are not into your own samsara you are free of samsara or simply go to sleep not right now, ok but <laughs> generally you can go to sleep 8 hours free of samsara go to the mall how do you spell mall? What is the spelling of mall? M A U L. Oh. Where you go to get mauled of your pocketbook and more importantly your sanity and now these days your immunity also. <laughs> That's why it's called mall. Okay. So this is uh, this is something which is uh, you know you can be free of samsara anytime. And there are many, you don't even have to go anywhere, all you need is something, you know, in the hand. This is the device. And you can just go like this and then, you know, you are free of samsara immediately. No problem. You enter into this internet. Inter jala. You know, this is what it is called. Net means jala, jalam. <laughs> so the Sanskrit word for internet is what? Interjala hai. Antarjala hai. Yeah. This is what it is. So, like this, you don't, you know, you don't need to sit and do shravanam. You don't need to let the, the, the topic speak to you in order to understand this. You can do so many things you want. So, the final thing which the Prakarna Granthas, uh, you know, unfold is the sambandha between the book, the message of the book more importantly, and the adhikari and the prayojana. How is the person who is qualified to study, to understand, how is this person going to reap the benefit of the message of this oneness or whatever you have here? How is this person going to reap the benefit? By this Shravana. What is the relationship between the book, which is the Vishaya, and the Prayojana? 
what is the the, the connection between the the book and the prayojana prayojana means the benefit what is the connection and uh, yes and that shravanam here technically uh, speaking it is called pratipadaka pratipadya sambandha it is the relationship between the book and the adhikari between the book and what the subject matter of the book the the, the prayojana the 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 purpose is that of the revealer you know pratipadya pratipadaka pratipadya sambandha revealer revealed sambandha to whom it is revealed the one who is ready and once it is revealed the prayojanam becomes you pun intended yeah and and that you know that is this is how the prakarana grantha very systematically unfolds then we talk about adhikaritvam then what is the message of the upanishad how this mahavakya which we'll be talking about a lot about how this mahavakya is unfolded how is it internalized how is it assimilated all this very step by step it is unfolded and that is called prakarana grantha and if we examine all the prakarana granthas they are just copyright free upliftment of things passages sometimes verbatim verses mantras from the upanishads including this one because really speaking as i said there is no apne aap knowledge at all this is not coming from you know one's head the head is not thinking here it is not coming from one's head we are way ahead of that because it is revealed by bhagavan and since it is revealed i have an attitude of learning i can suspend the karta or rather the pramata the knower i can suspend for a time and understand and then so the, therefore there is nothing new there is nothing to show off like i said even the similes which make for good poetry even the similes the metaphors etc etc they are also not new how can they be new atma is dot 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 like sky like space that's all we can say nothing more we can say same similes some new things are there which delight and each uh, each uh, despite this each author comes up with their own way of uh, presenting you know it's like the the food is already made and then what you know the payasam is already made by bhagavan and the acharyas go and add cardamom powder <laughs> that's all it is oh what a lovely smell it's all it is just a few touches or you 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 present it you know carrot given by bhagwan and then somebody cuts it into a shape of the flower and makes a salad you know some kind of a with a special knife you can core it and make it look like a rose that's all it is it is just a matter of presentation presentation of what mahavakya that's all it is what is mahavakya mahavak vakyam sentence same thing in our title also vakya vakya vritti laghu vakya vritti sentence vakyam sentence and what is a sentence that which has a subject object and predicate that is the sentence it should make sense you can't just string a few words together and then call it a sentence it will not be a sentence if i were to say elephant orange and then what else you know chair tree is that a sentence no it is just a few objects subjects together subjects or objects together that 
does not a sentence make? Sentence means it should have a subject, it should have an object, and then it should make sense. Minimum, it should have subject object and it should make sense. I should understand it, it should have some kind of a logical meaning there. So this is Vakya. And like this, there are many, 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 many sentences. You open any book full of sentences. Whether it's a book of prose or poetry, poetry sometimes it is difficult to delineate it as a sentence, especially modern poetry, because <laughs> the, you know, because there is what is called poetic license, and you can put things wherever you want. But even there, there will there will be some kind of a sentence strung together. Then what's the difference between vakya and mahavakya? When we encounter sentences in the universe, those sentences always end in a comma or in a semicolon, even though they have a period after them. Because it's not the final word on anything. That's why every sentence is contested. Every sentence is cut up. Every sentence is defied. Every sentence is put down. And then a new sentence comes up to take its place. That's why the world is full of words. Words, 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 words. And how do we know? Because even, even if you look at the word world, you know, only the L is extra. If you remove the L, it's just word. <laughs> That's how the whole Jagat is. Word and its meaning. Word and meaning, word and meaning, word and meaning, word and meaning, thought, word and meaning, thought, word and meaning. Everything is a series of words and meanings, and what kind of words and meanings? Endless words and meanings. Endless words and meanings. So many words, so little time. So many sentences, so little time. This is Vakya. So many sentences. And even though the, technically the sentence will have a full stop, a period at the end, what do I say? I say that that's not quite true. Because from the standpoint of Vedanta, all sentences are just continued. They are actually what in grammar we are advised not to do. They are called run-on sentences. <laughs> They keep on, 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 on. One is cut, one there is a strike through, one is underscored, one is uh, deleted and replaced and it just keeps going. That's why we all talk too much. We talk too much. Even though Bhagavan has put us in masks, we still have not learned. <laughs> yeah, masks have to cover the mouth. That is a, that is a, you know, a requirement, otherwise it's not mass. Bhagavan for two years has zipped the uh, jiva. The jiva still doesn't know. <laughs> to keep quiet. <laughs> so the run-on sentences make up the uh, make up this whole universe. Make up not only this entire universe, but make up the person who is looking at the universe? Because for every sentence that is expressed, either through the mask or without the mask, there are hundred more sentences in the head. So what is expressed? You know, you come to the Gurukulam and you see somebody, you're able to rec recognize them despite the mask. And then what? Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. That is what is expressed. What is unexpressed is, I wish this person hadn't come. 
because last time they cut me off in the in the breakfast line what is this person doing here what vedanta they will study do you, you think they can study or assimilate any vedanta tell me the truth yeah. such a person who has no basic courtesy who has no this thing what is this person doing here so you see so now there are two sets of sentences <laughs> hello how are you there is the objective statement of okay this person such and such a person is at the gurukulam they have signed up their name is on the list to attend this retreat theek hai but then what is <laughs> there are so many vakyas in the head not expressible that's why they are in the head okay yeah and so what does this mean this means something very 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 profound so the expressed world of sentences words meaning objects people situation things ishvara srishti ishvara's srishti what is this ishwara right in the first class it had to come <laughs> well we cannot discuss vakya maha vakya at, at all without ishwara ishwara is the cause of the universe and that cause here is you know is what we are talking about this cause is uh, is the is non separate we will see we will see all that later right now you can just say ishvara jagat karanam because of which all that is here is here because we can't make carrot we can make a flower out of the carrot you know then you can shave off the uh, peelings and then you know you can arrange it in the form of a flower or you can artistically cut it to resemble something a boat a small child something but uh, you know we cannot make the carrot whether we are talking of carrot or whether we are talking of diamond which also for some reason comes in carrots and then or whether <laughs> or whether we are talking of gold which is also comes in carrots we can't make the carrot we can just do things with the gold with the diamonds so that jagat karta is ishvara so the world of expressed and agreed upon vakyas are what you know this is what is called ishwaras jagat ishwaras jagat because i you know what is how do we know it is ishwaras jagat i see something because it is there i see something and you also see the same thing he also sees the same thing she also sees the same thing certain facts about the thing that we see are indisputable in other words objective they are all there this is a tree what is this tree it the, it has a trunk and it has branches it has leaves except sometimes in the winter if it is not a you know if it is a shedding tree then it will not have uh, leaves in the winter and when it has leaves they are green or in the fall they are red yellow different colors these are all things that we can agree upon and then see so there are two sets of vakyas one set of vakya is the one that we can you know all agree upon it is it is ishwara's universe a projected universe that is as we will come to understand non separate from ishwara from bhagavan bhagavati then whatever else went on in the head i don't like this tree <laughs> i don't like this person or even you know i don't like myself i'll never understand vedanta how many years i have been coming here i never get this 
and that person sitting over there is nodding at everything they are getting everything i am not getting any, anything that makes it worse you know yeah <laughs> and these are things that are going on in the head so the vakyas in the head <laughs> are what jeeva srishti your own srishti vakyas in the head are your own doings impressions from the past reactions to early hurts unprocessed early hurts fears tears difficulties sorrow all this may all these vakyas the unexpressed and unexpressible vakyas make up the jeevas jagat so now there are two jagats yes welcome to dvaita <laughs> this <laughs> this is why we need advaita so then as i said even you know whether we are talking of the vakyas outside they are also run on sentences why are they run on sentences because nothing can be a final word about anything you cannot have a final word at all each thing is dissected contested revised updated etc 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 continuously all the time all the time and what about what is going on in your head the vakyas inside your head that too is continually revised contested detested <laughs> all the time yeah see this person cut me off in line not a nice person and then suddenly that person is you know you as you are thinking of the person the person appears in front of you one good thing about the mask is you can have any facial expression and get away with it <laughs> see there are some good you know there are some uh, what should i say avantara phalam of this <laughs> of this uh, pandemic you can get away with even frowning scowling nobody will think anything because you can you cannot uh, you know do that and then they say did you drop this it looks like it's yours oh yes thank you thank you thank you you take the object and then thank them and then what happens to the 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 uh, in your head what happens to the sentences about this person in your head they get revised favorably revised in this case correct <laughs> later on you know they may get revised again negatively we don't know we'll wait for the lunch line and then decide <laughs> so whether we are talking of the sentences outside words and meaning that that make up this wonderful thing called the jagat and that's why the word jagat is is uh, so the the vyutpatti the definition or uh, the uh, the uh, definition uh, according to the words is jayate gachati iti jagat that which is born jayate that which is gone gachati born gone born gone in between there is is <laughs> born is gone and you can put it in any way it's not linear that's the beauty of it gone is born born gone is is born gone <laughs> doesn't matter same thing you know on the microcosmic level of one's own antakarana one's own inner instrument of the mind the emotions with the ahankara the i notion making judgments about the the world and about oneself same thing is going on born gone 
born gone born gone so the vakyas are constantly undergoing editing revisions but nonetheless it's a run on sentence a run on sentence constantly running 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 that's why it's called a run on sentence that keeps you running keeps you running on for what because one wants a full stop badly the whole life the gamut of human experiences and the life that one leads is in search of a point pun intended the point of life is this point the full stop when can i stop seeking 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 one life gone seeking 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 another life gone and next life what you know not you know so again more see and king you you see some kings that's all this this is what one wants one wants to badly put a full stop a permanent full stop and the full stop is not even a thing really because what is the definition of a point if we look a point is that which occupies no space <laughs> it is not even a really a thing but this is what one wants one wants to badly erase the commas the semicolons and every you know the the dashes and every the you know every other form of punctuation after the sentence and put a point one is tired especially if one is a human being yet one doesn't know what to do except to be retired thinking that maybe that will put a stop to all this 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 colorful world of words both that is quote unquote outside and quote unquote within so the mahavakya is that which puts a full stop effortlessly to all the sentences within and without that is why it is called mahavakya because it is the ultimate word ultimate word nothing more to say no need to keep running on and on and on and on in search of what in search of some freedom for all those sentences that are going on within the head this is called vikshepa a personal projection the sentences within the head are a personal vikshepa the sentences that form ishwara's jagat are also vikshepa but a harmless vikshepa the sentences going on within the head ham full vikshepa because that is where they hook into impressions of pain fear sorrow anxiety doldrums and so to put a full stop is is the is the point of human life the point of human life is to put a point at the end and that the only thing that can do that is the study of mahavakya and what is this study of mahavakya what is this mahavakya what is it going to yield it shows that there are no two jagats there are not two jagats that is the the function of the mahavakya two 
jagats are not there one within that is nursed for many 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 lifetimes society helps in nurturing this inner jagat family also gives its blessing and legacy to nurture this inner jagat of course you should be suspicious of course you should be afraid even if you are not afraid people will make you afraid of course you should be worried of course you should be doing this of course people cannot be trusted after all this is kali yuga we find one more you know one more uh, what is that you know that uh, that uh, red dot with circles around it to to one more target no pun intended okay don't think of the shop yeah so the world within the head this terrible world of run on sentences that that is the stuff of which nightmares are made that makes one uncomfortable in the outer world of bhagwan's sentences makes one feel like one doesn't have a place makes one feel like one is taking too much space makes one feels you know that one doesn't belong makes one feel like one is you know an idiot or sometimes it makes one feel like everyone else except i am an idiot this is also there <laughs> based on you know various personalities so the two jagats namely ishwaraj jagat and then what is jeevas jagat the the cannot coexist cannot just like when you cast a shadow and you are just walking minding your own business and the shadow comes out from behind and says boo imagine how scary that would be but this is exactly what is happening not possible to coexist because one is desperately trying to make two out of one intoxicated by agnyanam atma agnyanam the prasada of atma agnyanam self ignorance prasada cannot be translated okay yeah the gift we can say at the most prasada of atma agnyanam is this jagat in the head that cannot be reconciled with the jagat outside the head which is this lack of this inability to have this reconciliation this resolution is the cause of sorrow is the cause of pain is the cause of anxiety is the cause of fear is the cause of all kinds of problems mahavakya is that which brings the two together how how can the objective world of ishvara consisting of people in their places consisting of trees consisting of flowers consisting of all kinds of things be one with my complicated jagat uh, which is uh, which keeps arising in the head consisting of what impressions about the very things that are outside how can the two become one well because they are already one they are already one they are non separate really that which happens inside the head is an offshoot of atma agnyanam and is the cause of personal torment atma agnyanam gone the inner world subsides why because the nature of the i is that which neither rises nor sets the nature of the i is the nature of ishvara that's why when you write in english the first letter of ishvara is what ah that's the whole point so this is what is mahavakya 
ಜೀವೇಶ್ವರಯೋಹ ಐಕ್ಯಬೋಧಕ ವಾಕ್ಯಂ ಮಹಾವಾಕ್ಯಂ ಅ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅನ್ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಜೇಡೆಡ್ ಫೇಡೆಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಜೀವ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಈಶ್ವರ who is untouched even by a whiff of sorrow anger fear all the things that trouble human beings why human beings because atma agnanam morphs into something called anyatha agnanam in the human being alone if we look at our animal friends they are fine they don't take things they are in fact better off than human beings they don't take things personally they are not judgmental even in you know even if it say dog that is, that goes to that is taken to shows westminster dog show I was waiting for a flight and this is what they were showing you know at the gate westminster dog show very uh, engrossing so the owner comes and owner is all dressed in a nice you know nice clothes suit and everything and the dog comes the dog doesn't have even a single hair out of place trotting up jump jumps you know jump through the hoop literally here okay yeah jumps <laughs> walks sit and the judges come look at it you know look at it from various angles and everything it is declared to be the winner in its category and then a certificate with a blue bow you know is there big certificate that is presented my question is to whom to whom is this certificate presented to the owner not to the dog in fact the owner will not even let the dog see it beta this is for you look you have worked so hard no owner will keep it carefully because if you show it to the dog it will assimilate it yeah so the degree is for the owner the pedigree of the dog is also for the owner it's not for the dog the dog is free of degrees pedigrees all these things it doesn't care that it is the best of in its class you know it is happy that's why to contrast this uh, what is that called the uh, westminster dog show they had an all they have now an alternative dog show it's called the ugly dog show <laughs> and they bring whatever they think is the ugliest of dogs you know one with the tongue hanging out poor thing it cannot bring it because some teeth are not there and it the tongue hangs out it doesn't know what to do it doesn't care so it is how it is one with the ear missing one with something else missing one with just you know when you look at it you have to look away those kinds of you know uh, uh, dogs they also have their day and this ugly dog show is for whom for the owners <laughs> for the owners who are sad that they and jealous that they cannot take the dog there so they'll have their own thing for the owners not for the dogs animals are free at least in that animal life they're free of self judgment they are free of this inner duality this inner dvaita the dog may have its inner you know little bit of inner thoughts okay this person is good always gives me a biscuit whenever he or she sees me this person no, i don't care about that much but that's about it not more than that so only the human being the human being is the adhikari sharira the body of the human being 
is the adhikari sharira meant for this knowledge meant to learn to study how to put a full stop to the run on sentences that make life miserable that is why in the title vakya vritti we have to add a little maha maha vakya vritti because no other sentence is worth talking about really this you can practice actually throughout this week this is something that is openly said in the kathopanishad anya vacha pramunchata esah amritatvasya setuhu setu means bridge the bridge to oneness the bridge to immortality lies in a sadhana called giving up the sentences giving up the need for keeping on regurgitating rehearsing and playing over and over again the sentences that occur in the head oh but they keep occurring let them occur but you don't have to you don't have to restate them rehash them edit them punctuate them add on to them run on with them let it occur let it drop let it occur let it drop the kathopanishad says anya vacha all other talk other talk means what other than mahavakya other than mahavakya all other talk what to do drop it pramunchata may one give up because this sadhana is the way to understanding oneself as free of dying small deaths every day esah amritatvasya amritasya setuhu the bridge to assimilating this knowledge is to give up constantly writing novels in one's head about ishvara's jagat some are wishful thinking futuristic novels <laughs> some are horror stories some are mystery novels depending on people's personalities why is this person here they usually don't come at this time why have they come here i should find out you know you should not find out okay stop <laughs> you do not need to find out you put you know the way to understand mahavakya is at as the full stop is learning to put full stops in the sentences that you have in the head oh this person never comes to this camp how come they are here full stop <laughs> change the channel just like you do on tv who uh, encounter a program that you don't like you quickly go like this with the remote yeah go like this now yeah stop stop right there stop oh but then another thought comes let it come stop 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 this is a gift of the pandemic really learning to be with ourselves without the need for punctuating truncating commenting and as though it's not bad enough that we do it ourselves one seek company to do it with support group seeking like minded people to hash out all the the inner world laundry and hang it out no need stop because this is what you know because until that those run on sentences do not stop this sentence which has a full stop cannot be understood assimilated rejoiced or reveled in so this is laghu vakya vritti vakya vritti 
unfolds two mahavakyas tatvamasi and aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi which is the opening mahavakya in the brahadaranyaka upanishad right in the beginning you open brahadaranyaka upanishad and mahavakya is right there thank god because the brahadaranyaka upanishad looking for any passage is like uh, it's easier to find a needle in the stack of hay rather than look for something in the brahadaranyaka upanishad that is huge but this aham brahmasmi is the guiding light that unfolds the you know that the, for, for which the whole upanishad is there to unfold this mahavakya tatvamasi from the 6th chapter of chandogya and there is a famous dialogue between shwetaketu and his father uddalaka so here in the laghu vakya that's why it's called laghu in the laghu vakya vritti we have only one mahavakya namely aham brahmasmi that is unfolded in pithi short verses 18 verses not easy to do not easy to compose with such deliberation you can imagine the the author's expertise and you can imagine the erudition you can visualize that so we have this and then we have the uh, uh, you know in these 18 verses we have the whole message of the entire universe which we'll be looking into now the laghu vakya vritti so there is a little bit of a pun also on the word laghu laghu as in when compared to vakya vritti that is one meaning this is laghu vakya vritti as we have talked about but there is also another meaning that which which is small which is short which is right there because all mahavakyas are laghu mahavakyas are not run on sentences sometimes it's just one syllable om finished <laughs> sometimes it is two words pragnanam brahma mahavakyas are not run on sentences so you see there is this thing called jiva and then this jiva is full of sorrow and then uh, this jiva is equated to the cause of the universe and then that is called ishvara and then this jiva and ishvara are one and then that is and that is done through this methodology of understanding that the jiva is nothing but but uh, consciousness and that uh, ultimately after you you quote and quote take away ishwaratvam the glory and the avatara called ishvara all that is there is consciousness and so this is not a mahavakya <laughs> this is the unfoldment of it that's why laghu means it is it is a it is a nod to the upanishad laghu vakya vritti very beautiful and you will see the skill of the author one one short uh, uh, you know uh, observation before we get into the text and what is that the uh, the uh, the text is it really composed by adi shankara it doesn't matter because uh, you see adi shankara in the in the beginning you know the because the knowledge is just taken from the gurus whoever composed would would dedicate that work to adi shankara because that is how they got everything from the sampradaya from the parampara and so they never put their own names on it it is a knowledge without a knower i said last night 
and today i will add it it is a knowledge without an author as well it's attributed to adi shankara but we can still enjoy it whether it is adi shankara or not it doesn't matter we can still enjoy it if we let go of uh, the academic mindset i have to know when was it published and what are the signature uh, expressions of adi shankara and are those signature expressions available here that is just more and more sentences okay yeah so with these words let us get into the text स्थूलो मो देह सूक्ष्म स्थूलो मो देह सूक्ष्मीरग साक्षी बोधस्ते विभासक बोधाभासो बुद्धिगत साक्षी बोधस्ते विभासक बोधाभासो बुद्धिगत कर्तापुण्यपा सो द फस्ट वन द वर्ड स्टार्ट विथ स्थूल स्थूल वट स्थूल मीन gross no pun intended okay yeah simply that which is easily objectifiable it's almost like a nod to ishwara's jagat it is almost prayer like sthula sthula means gross sthula deha mamsamaya so this body immediately we have a departure from i body or even from my body no i body no my body this body idam shariram ayam deha this body already there is a little separation what is this body mamsamaya mamsa vikara mayat vikare the suffix mayat is in the sense of a modification we can also say it is in the sense of you know preponderance full of mamsa muscles flesh and then we can also bring in all other things marrow bones all the things of the that constitutes the five elements okay sthula ha sthula deha ha mamsamaya ha so this physical body is 
that which can be seen, which is gross, which is available for objectification, which is the, which are all these, which is, the, you know, all the things that you can say these are muscles, bones, a conglomeration, an assemblage of mamsa, a preponderance of mamsa, a modification of all the things that you eat, which is again mamsa. Mamsa is also the word for meat. This body is just a lot of meat, really. So this is the sthula shariram. But then there is also another body. A body which is not so easy to objectify. A body that is not so available to immediately pinpoint and do, you know, any kind of a, say something about it. That is in the form of the mind, feelings, etc., etc., etc. So, sukshmahasyat, the subtle body, which consists of the mind, the sense organs, all these things, that is what? Vasana mayaha. What is vasana? Impressions from the past. Remembered, half remembered, all kinds of impressions of the past. This life and other lives. Is that all the subtle body? No. It exists along with Jnanendriya. See the second line? Jnanendriya. Sense organs. How many sense organs are there? Five. Five. Do you want to li me to list them? Thank God. Okay. So, <laughs> along with Sardham means along with the five sense organs and the five organs of actions. Hands, legs, padipadam, and then what else? Speech, walk. No, that is in the earlier thing, eyes, etc. That is sense organs. I offered to list them, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, uh, so jnana, and this karmendriya, speech, hands, legs, speech, organs of excretion, and organs of reproduction. Five. Along with that, buddhi. Buddhi. Buddhi includes manaha, and then we'll discuss it later. Manaha, you know, all these things. It includes. And then also the five pranas. Tat shariragau. Shariragaha, tat shariragau means they go along with what is called the subtle body. You know, the first verse is kind of a letdown. What is this? I came here for Aham Brahmasmi and now it is listing what is the physical body and this fleshy physical body. Some of the translations are like that. This body is fleshy, the physical blow. <laughs> One translation I saw this morning. The physical body is fleshy, it said. So why are we looking into the fleshy physical body when I came here for Vedanta? I know all this, you know, Sharira, Trayam, this, all this. I know why, why we have to do this? What I want is Aham Brahmasmi. Why am I looking into the body and into the mind? We'll find out when we come back. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om.